This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for brekkie, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight <laughs> to your door. They just drop them at your door, people. You'll save time and eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while taking all of your holiday to-dos in stride with good meals in the tum-tum. If you're too busy with all this stuff, these meals are easy. Easy to get done. They taste great. All you've got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 and use code expandingreality50 to get 50% off. That's code expandingreality50 at factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 to get 50% off. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, we got the honor to sit down with Janine Burgess and Ben Carroll. Now, Janine is an artist and a yoga teacher. She does this amazing mandala artwork. It's very precise, but very colorful and gorgeous. Also, her uh, insect uh, pictures that she does with the mandalas in the background. Guys, I'll, I'll link all the ways to find her. Go check her out for sure. Uh, now, the music that you're hearing right now is actually Ben Carroll's music. He is an intuitive sound healer and just does some unbelievable believable stuff with his voice with these singing bowls uh, all the ways of course to find him as well will be linked down in the show notes along with their links is going to be the way to expand your experience with us here on the show at expandingrealitypodcast.com that is where links to all the socials rock fan merchandise all of that stuff can be found there so uh, let's get to this incredible conversation guys on this one we talk about reconnecting to the deeper parts of ourselves shifting energies cosmic cycles cymatics and geometry and vibrational styles states and the dark night of the soul that we're going through right now and the shift in energy. So uh, let, let's get right to this uh, with Janine Burgess and Ben Carroll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there in the listening world, an incredibly special episode today. We have Janine Burgess and Ben Carroll both here to tag team the awesomeness. Now, both of you are incredibly gifted and you're artists and you both work with a uh, geometry and sacred geometry more specifically in your own ways and we're going to get into all that because you're both incredibly like I said talented and fascinating and I am truly grateful to have you on so let's do some introductions um I was raised well so Janine uh, we'll have you up first uh I'm Janine Burgess I am currently trying to make it as a visual artist um I opened a studio last year like kind of in the middle of the pandemic like after making eight hundred dollars two months prior for the entire month. <laughs> so I started just to kind of expand a little bit on creating art and it kind of just took off, still trying to make it all work, but there's kind of a, a long story behind where my paintings came from. But um, yeah, I make art, I teach some movement and I have, just a general interest in health and wellness and spirituality and all of that. You're just super grounded. You can tell it in your art, but your head's in the clouds as well with your sacred geometry, with your, I think it's mandalas or mandelas. I can't know how it's pronounced, but you do that. There's a million art. pronunciations. <laughs> it's like mandala because it's got the mandala, ALA. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> uh, but then of course your insects and that's what drew me to you in the first place. And that's why this is so adorable, by the way. So Ben, I'd been following you on TikTok for like months, I think. And I'd just been loving your music and everything. Uh, and then um, Janine, I think I liked one of your pictures. Didn't know that you guys were connected at all. 
all on Instagram, a totally separate platform. And I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And then you message and it, we just started this very cool interaction. I was just like, God, you're, and I was asking you specifically about, uh, I think you're, what is it? The cicada one that you did. Absolutely beautiful here for the audio only audience. Check the show notes for all the ways, of course, to see this. I'm going to put her art up for the video audience. This is the painting right here. Isn't that dope? Yeah. So check the show notes for all the ways to find this and more because you have a whole series that you do on these and it's incredible. And your um, the, the beauty that you find specifically in the color choice that you use, but your style, the way it's very realistic looking, but still very creative and interpretational. I think it's beautiful. And the Mandela art in the back or Mandela, however we were, were doing it, but it's <laughs> incredible. So you're a wonderful and a beautiful artist. And I'm grateful that you're here to share that with us now, Ben, uh, your music, like I said, I'd, I'd found you on um, TikTok, uh, which is a great vehicle, by the way. I don't care how many people want to talk shit about that thing. It's actually really cool. <laughs> and I think it's a deeper, uh, I, you know, because we can get into creating your reality and stuff like that. But it, with TikTok specifically, when you talk about things like algorithms and the, only the things that you want to appear there appear there, it's kind of like that you can scale that up to your actual life. You Only the things that you want to pay attention to and see are what you're going to, you know, and the seeds you plant are going to pop up in your life. Now, what's really cool, man, is, is so your music, of course. And one thing I just wanted to compliment you on from a former musician uh, to what the hell you're doing, which is just amazing, is your damn angelic voice, man. Uh, and <laughs> you're, the, the one thing when I, when I hear you and especially sing, but also play because you do the Tibetan singing bowls and you have this whole deal, it's incredibly immersive and it's beautiful. But uh, one thing I will say, the first word that comes to mind, which is the greatest compliment I think a musician can get is the word control. You have this just precision control that's insane. And it it's only accented by your range and your melody. So it's fascinating. And uh, so we did also replace the intro song with one of your songs. Uh, thank you so much for letting us do that. But it's beautiful music. And of course, listening audience, uh, that will be linked down in the show notes as well. You get a double dose of absolutely incredible artistry here uh, today. So uh, Ben, if you don't mind, let's uh, get a little bit of your background because you have a lot of flavor to your story as well. Sure, sure. Um, so I've been a lifelong musician um, these days. I'm facilitating uh, kind of sound healing work through uh, with groups. I, I prefer to work with group energy because it's really, really powerful. And before before the world went crazy, I was traveling all over New England and, and down down the East Coast, doing a lot of in person events in like yoga studios and stuff like that. And then um, once the world went crazy, <laughs> I uh, I've been doing it online, and online has been going phenomenally well. And I started incorporating different elements like binaural beats and synths to go along with the singing bowls and voice. So that's been going really, really well. But um, before I was doing this, I was actually in a hard rock band, signed to Universal Records, touring all over. So it's quite a contrast. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, it was, it's, a, it's an interesting story of how I got from here to there. But these days I'm in Maine doing sound healing and very happy to be doing that. And so, so excited to be here with you, man, because I've been actually listening to your podcast for like the past month or six weeks or so since since i actually liked one of your posts or something or wrote a message and you responded immediately and i was like oh cool but janine actually turned me on to you and i was like so i started listening i was like oh this is actually a great podcast so i've been i've been actually listening to you quite a lot the past <laughs> six weeks which is really cool Absolutely grateful. I can't tell you what that means to me. And so sweet. And yes, the way that this, that all three of us came together is insane. Like that connection independently. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just a beautiful triad of just awesomeness going on here. And I'm grateful for the compliments and the kind words. Thank you so much. So uh, how did you two meet? <laughs> we met, we met at a, uh, a summer solstice event in 2016. 16. Yeah, and this is the first time we've ever done anything like this together, doing a podcast together. So it's yeah. really cool. And 2016, you released a record. Were you on? Were you out promoting that or playing that? That wasn't out yet when we met. Uh, not when we met. But then we had our first date like a month and a half later, and it was. I think you had your launch like the day after. The day after our first date. That, That's that, crazy. Yeah. My first album in like the, the sound healing style came out then because I had a lot of albums out before then. But yeah. yeah. 
I, so multidimensional voice is the name of that, by the way. Again, linked in the show notes, guys. Go check that thing out. That's so cool. And so, man, big big year for everything. So, uh, Janine, what got you into the artwork that you do now? Did this progress from a younger style that you did, or how did that yeah. come about? Um, I kind of just from by the time I could hold a pencil, I knew I really loved art. And both my parents were kind of art and science blended. Like they always sort of created stuff. So it was always in my world, you know, and I always knew I wanted to do art and it kind of progressed and I always doodled and just made stuff. And, uh, I went to, I started college for it. I was going to be like an elementary school art teacher and then I learned how much they made <laughs> and it just kind of fell away. Uh, I took a long hiatus from higher education, um, went and got my yoga teacher training and just started teaching movement and doing other things and put art on the back burner, but always just had like a sketchbook and I learned, I taught myself how to knit. Like I was always making stuff. Um, and then I had, <laughs> I had a breakup in 2014 that, uh, I was determined not to go in like the depression hole <laughs> mm-hmm. <Been> there, <laughs> and <yeah. laughs> I, I decided to, I like, I had a piece of plywood in my attic and I thought I'd make a big painting, paint the plywood. And I was going to like, just do the heart chakra to heal my broken heart. And then I, I remember staring at it. It was on the floor in my spare bedroom and I just, was like, well, if I'm going to do the chakras, I might as well just start from the ground up. So it started in May 2014, lasted. I was on summer break. I was in school for health science, um, which I ultimately got a degree in, but I was on like summer hiatus from that. So I spent the entire summer just doing yoga and making art. And I did this entire chakra series in three months. Um, and sort of stylistically, they're not as advanced as the ones that I'm doing now, but like I was banging out one every week or two over the course of three months. And it was a really transformative summer. And so they're all, they're huge. If you like go and look at my Instagram or some of my pictures, you know, they're 41 inches. I don't know how I settled on that, but that's what they are now. (coughs) Um, And that just kind of opened up this whole world. I never wanted to really show my art, but after I finished the series, I knew that they needed needed to be out in the world. And it kind of opened up a lot of doors. I got my first gallery show a few months after I finished them. And I was like, well, maybe I've got something here. So I just started, I, I don't think I even learned about the chakras in detail when I made them, I was kind of learning as I went. And then the following year, I kind of dove into more of the chakra system, more geometry, started to get a little bit more deliberate with my geometry. That's still a learning process, but one of the best ways to learn geometry, sacred geometry is to actually create it. So I've started just playing off of all of that and building. And I still love making the huge paintings. I still do like a few a year. But I've started branching out. And especially with your household, like the inspiration, you just look at your background here. You think of, you know, Ben over there making, a, you know, some incredible new music and then you're in there painting. It's just the energy in your space has to be just unbelievable. And yeah. uh, I, I like back to what you said about your parents. Um, it's interesting, too, because that right when you said your background and your folks were too so juxtaposed as far as idealistically, uh, it, it definitely shows in your artwork. And this is what's so cool, because your mandalas are incredibly gorgeous and creatively orchestrated but they're very precise there's a lot of precision in there same with your uh your uh, insect work and this is right when you said it i was like yes because it's beautiful and artistic but you have this science piece that's very anatomically correct like down to the like you're a field journalist that's studying insects that's what it looks like but you have <laughs> there they're, they're, i'm still trying <laughs> they're totally amazing because i'm an art school dropout so <laughs> well good you know what i mean uh, yeah good. i'm a music school dropout <laughs> exactly yeah and i never went to college we're all doing 
doing great. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, I, I have a lot of thoughts on this because a lot of these researchers that have written these incredibly book, incredibly cool books on the shelf back here, they've come up with the most incredible ideas and observations about the world around them. And they always say this caveat, like it's going to denote their value any uh, as far as their input on any situation that they're speaking in. But in my mind, it's the reverse. And I always point this out. And that's why I said good right away. Good. Mm. That's what makes you so creative and original because you're not put in this box. You know, like Ruth Mendelson. I don't know if you have ever heard of her. Check out her episode. It's back in the catalog. Uh, she is a professor over at Berkeley. She's the first female to be in the scoring department. She does the scores for Jane Goodall's um, audiobook and podcast and unbelievable, but same thing. She was like, I'm just, you know, self-taught and I didn't want to learn music and all that stuff and same thing. And so, but now all incredibly successful, right? And so I think that there's a lot of beauty in that because you just get out of your way, you know, or don't let the matrix in, infect the process, you know, with this like Absolutely. rigid ideology, right? Um, yeah. You know, uh, okay, so um, Ben, with your music, how what made you make the switch from the rock and metal that you were doing, signed to Universal, you know, probably just girls, 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 and blow everywhere, and then now you are, uh, you know, slapping bowls with a stick. What's going on? What was that yeah. transition like? It, it, it wasn't an overnight transition. <laughs> when, so, <laughs> no? when, that, when that band went to hiatus, I moved up to Maine, where, where we both are now, and just kind of started, started like, exploring different things and... Um, and I discovered singing bowls and what, what really, you know, and I, and I bought the bowls and, and, and started singing with them, but really what it was, was what, what you were just talking about. I was really interested in just creating music from a space where I wasn't running on muscle memory, wasn't running on things that I knew how to do really well. Like, cause I went to, I went to Berkeley for, for guitar and I spent, you know, a decade playing hundreds of shows a year on guitar and I was like to the point like I picked I felt like I pick up the guitar and I just like play the same exact things because my fingers are programmed to do that and I wanted to get into music where I was actually just flowing with it and allowing the creation to happen the, the melodies to happen and doing it with instruments that I really had no idea what I was going to do with they're obviously not very hard to play so it's not like I had to learn how to play them but I just you know started um I, it literally became my morning meditation. I would sing with the bowls for, for however long, you know, anywhere from 20 minutes to hours. And it just kind of grew out of that. Yeah. It was, it was completely accidental. And I, I actually did not want to do it in front of people. <laughs> so, <laughs> never doing it's this thing you don't talk about. Anyone right? ever is mortifying, <laughs> but uh, that, that obviously didn't work out so well, but yeah, it was, it was com free form exploration, like just moving into a space of, of doing things without any idea of what I was doing, just total preform exploration. It's incredible. And you're just so connected. And so I will disagree with you that they're easy to play. I have a couple of them and they sound like a kid with pots in the, you know, uh, in the <laughs> uh, kitchen, right? Um, no, you, you just, you flow with it. There's a total and it's physical. And that's the thing that's interesting about both of you is you're both so well-versed in this hemi-sync idea because music uh, artistic, but also very mathematical. Uh, your mm -hmm. art as well, like we'd already talked about, incredibly beautiful and ornate and original, but also got some science in there and you have some some left brain stuff going on. So it sounds like the that you two both have really balanced the ideas through your uh, techniques in the style of the thing that you do in your niche. And it's just beautiful to watch you guys. And it's, I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all do next. And uh, this is just really, really cool. So I, I did want to talk to you guys about reconnecting to the deeper parts of yourselves and how you feel that uh, that resonates with each one of you. So Janine, what do you think? Uh, I am honestly struggling with it lately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, painting really helps me. Um, you know, the world is kind of crazy right now. And uh, I think we're both empathic. So we, mm. we absorb everything that's going on. You know, it's hard to go to the store because everybody is just nervous and crazy and you just kind of pick up on it and then I come home and I have all this anxiety and I'm like where is this coming from and and then you have to recognize that half of it's not even your own um and you know artwork just immersing in shapes and colors really helps to turn my brain off you know when I get in my studio and I paint it just shuts down the thinking brain and it's amazing. And, you know, he talks about it all the time where it just gets you 
out of that sort of clutter of your your conscious mind and deep into something else. So put on some music and go to town. Um, well, plus the, 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 the geometric patterns that you're working with is the underlying structure of your artwork is just, it, you know, the, the sacred geometry, I feel like that in itself has a way of ex expanding, um, expanding your reality. Nice. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, oh, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't even going there intentionally. I, I stopped because like, I'm doing this. And I didn't even yeah. need to. It just flows <laughs> out. I don't know. I know. It's great. Thank you so much. Those, those geometric patterns I think, you know, are part of the underlying structure of the physical space that we, li we live in, the, the energetic patterning. So I think working with that as a way of kind of um, tying back into the question that you asked, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but, connecting to higher self. Yeah, connecting yeah. to higher self. I, I, I feel like that um, that you, you know whether you're actually drawing it or whether you're whether you're looking at that when when, when you're looking at beautiful sacred geometry, um, it has a way of of reconnecting you to those higher parts of yourself to kind of just waking up to the to the um, to the more expanded or more expanded parts of reality. And you know the same with music because music is is um, is vibration in holding those kind of forms, especially with what I'm doing with playing drones. Is in when when you see somatics and you see those beautiful patterns that are forming, those aren't those aren't so much being held by playing a lot of different notes. You know, you can get some cool stuff going that way, but it's when you have those nice long drawn out notes that you get the the patterns starting to form and hold. And um, yeah, I feel like you know whether it's whether it's actual physical shapes or just the vibrational shapes it, it has a really potent way of kind of reorganizing your consciousness just well you're recalibrating yeah like definitely. the sounds the sounds recalibrate but then the structure of geometry really is the fabric of the universe and i know like sometimes i close my eyes and i just kind of see i see shapes and sort of geometry and like nets and but a lot when like during a sound journey the the bowls kind of mm. you can start seeing the cymatic shapes sort of in your visual cortex it's really yeah. interesting yep definitely Been, my experience as well no it, it's amazing so will you explain cymatics for the audience please yeah yes so cymatics is um is basically vibration showing itself in, in the way of in, in physical form and um the a video that you've probably seen online one of the ways that's popular to show it is when you take a sheet of metal and attach a speaker to it and play pure tone frequencies like what a singing bowl makes um through the through the speaker vibrating the sheet of metal and sprinkle some kind of powder onto the sheet of metal and as you hit Resi specific resonant frequencies you get the beautiful you get beautiful patterns that form with these all these particles moving and flowing and holding the form and, and that is a, the way of showing a, a way of displaying somatics but somatics is basically the underlying geometry within vibration and all all matter because all matter is vibration <laughs> exactly and the, um, i'm reminded of uh, of course your shirt and the flower of life by dramvalo melchizedek uh, and that's just mm -hmm. a such a cool cool right uh read and uh like you said it's it's the shape it's the fundamental shapes of the universe you talk about like the flower of life and things and all of that's laid out and there's actually you know places on the earth where these things can be uh demonstrated as well as uh in in utero the egg splits from one to two and it becomes the yeah. flower of life and that eight pattern uh that then that's the formation of all of life and then with that i'm I'm going to put a video uh, as you were explaining, and I'll put that in. So audio only audience, go check out the video linked in the show notes. Uh, and you, and that cymatic pattern, you should, have you thought about doing something like that, Ben, with your show, like a live thing to where that's going on to where you show, like, as you hit these notes, what's occurring physically. I don't know how to do that. I, there was someone that mentioned it. that was interested in doing that with me at some point, but it, it never went beyond the mentioning it point. So it hasn't, hasn't happened yet. And I don't know how to make it happen. <laughs> It would probably As be like yet. a like a performance piece where it'd be both of you interacting together. So like Janine, maybe you can be over there painting, you know, off to the side and you have homeboy sprinkling, you know, salt or whatever <laughs> on the speaker. And then Ben, you're just giving it hell, just, you know, angel and uh, just making it happen. It'd be a really cool That's thing awesome. to see. It certainly would be. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's let's really talk water. Uh, oh shit, and water too. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's, that. that's yeah. another way that they, they do it a lot is is with water, and then they, you know they they film the the patterns of the water. So there's some really cool stuff on Instagram with with some people that do that all the time. Dude, there really is. And the, and the one I'm thinking about is where uh, it's coming out of the hose and they put, I guess, a speaker behind it and they're filming the hose mm. that's pouring. And as they play different notes, it, it goes to like stairs, yeah. like in mid air. Yeah. It's like, what? And it's crazy. Yeah. All right. Uh, so shifting gears just a little bit. Let's talk about shifting energies. And I'm really interested in these cosmic cycles. Uh, and it does seem to be like we are doing a major energy shift right now. So what does shifting energies mean to you guys? Ben, let's start with you, bud. Um, to me, well, it, it's quite, I've been talking about for years that, you know, we're moving into a space where the, the, uh, the energy, the energies that we're, we've been subjected to, to put it, to put it simply, are, are starting to shift, you know, our, our solar system is starting to move into a, uh, a field of higher energy. And that is affecting everything because everything is energy, including, um, including, I guess you could tie it back to somatics, including the patterning of our, uh, our society, the patterning of our, th- of our consciousness, the patterning of, um, of everything is starting to shift. And you can see that reflected around, out in the world so much. And I've, I've been talking about this for years and just then to experience the past couple of years, that's just, <laughs> and where it's become so obvious that, that things are, um, are shifting significantly. And, you know, like like when like when a somatic pattern shifts, you go through a period where you're, you've been working with this beautiful pattern in your nice resonant frequencies that are holding it. But then you get to a point where it starts to shift. And as it starts to shift, you move into a, a place of chaos because it's the rearrangement. It's not uh. it's not the world is ending <laughs> uh, where things the thing the way things used to be just just doesn't work anymore. Um, and until you get to the point where you hit that next resonant frequency, the ride is the ride can be a little bit bumpy. But then when you get to the point where you're able to integrate and work with the higher frequencies, everything snaps in and starts flowing again. I think that's, I think that's exactly what's going on right now in the world and in, you know, within our society and in, in the whole solar system. Uh, Jenny, what do you think about the shifting energies right now? Have you even personally noticed perhaps like your art evolving in a different manner just simply in response to these shifting energies? Uh, yeah, I guess I hadn't really even thought that it's in a response. You know, it just sort of, I mean, art evolves just like anything. It, you know, the more time you spend on it, the more it evolves. But uh, yeah, I think the need to go deeper and sort of more specific mm. uh it just seems important to create meaning a little bit more <laughs> behind a lot of these things uh yeah i mean i think just in general the the shifting energies i think we can all feel it and we were even talking like time is changing mm. yes too. right yeah. Uh, so, what did they call it? The quickening. Is that what you've noticed? Yeah. Is that time speeding up? That's Absolutely. crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, and I've noticed uh, different stuff with the moon as well. Have you guys noticed what the moon's doing? No. I don't think so, no. Okay. So from my perspective, uh, I noticed this about a couple months ago and I told the wife of this and I was like, have you noticed that the moon doesn't go? Because, you know, in the I knew exactly where we are, right? Oriented, mm. oriented wise. Um, I just have a great great proprioception. I know where I'm at, right? Uh, and so with, um, I, I knew where the moon should come up at and it's way more west whenever it's a new moon. And then it, you know, gradually sets uh, or rises in the east rather um uh, you know, a lot later or whatever, but what it's been doing lately, and it's usually, it used to be dead on, even with the swabble or whatever. Uh, the moon, or the sun usually travels quite a bit, but the moon really doesn't. But on lately, I've been noticing it's going way more from north to south orientation rather than more of an east to west rising and setting. And so I've been seeing this like shift. And so the new moon is way more southwest and the new uh, full moon is way more northeast. And it's this like crazy thing. So just check it out. You know, if you think about it, kind of give yourself like a where it normally is and then look around. It'll be shifting just a little bit. It's got kind of a I'm going over here now. It's interesting, man. And then we, we talk about like pole shifts and plasma apocalypses and stuff like that. Have you guys heard of the plasma apocalypse? You're talking about this, like the solar flash? 
Uh, so there's a solar flash, but this has to do with more that our Earth is like a toroidal and that the energy comes out yeah. of the north. And OK, and then a, a giant hole opens up literally and then plasma comes out and like just no, I haven't obliterates heard everything. I'm going to send you a video. It's so cool. It's on YouTube. It's <laughs> like an hour fun. and a half long, but it's totally worth the watch. It's a it lot. Sounds fun. orgasmic. It's, <laughs> it's definitely that. Yeah, it's a it's just bad shit. And that's why I love it. And then it relates to like what the reset happens, like giants are here. And that's where Devil's Tower is. Perhaps it's like this old tree, you know, and it's just really, really cool. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so let's talk about the dark night of the soul that humanity is having right now. And this does have to do with these shifts in this cycle that we're talking about. So first of yeah. all, what is a dark night of the soul? Um, I think really simply, it's just when sort of everything goes wrong and you have to evaluate what really means, what, what things really mean to you and what's important. And, um, you know, I feel like I had a few of my own personal ones. Um, like my dad died when I was young and I kind of had to go through this sort of reevaluation. My life kind of went left, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, trajectory from where it was gonna, you know, and it's like, I think just when everything crumbles and it's like things that you thought were real and true just no longer apply um so i think everybody's kind of going through that right now and it's really oddly named because it's real poetic the way it's named right it's a dark mm. night of it. the soul <laughs> but what it really is is more like a tits up of the soul it's like everything yeah. goes yeah, to shit totally. yeah, right? yeah uh so uh ben what have you experienced with that well i, I think um What's what's ultimately going? It's it's going on on such a mass level because of the shifting that's going on. A lot of the things that have been, you know, are kind of like go to comfort level zones, places of being, the ways that we exist in this reality, and the illusions that we've held in front of ourselves, which have been massive, um, are starting to teeter and are starting to not make sense anymore. And, and things that used to make you feel perfectly comfortable, for some reason, that shifting energy inside you, it just doesn't feel like it used to. And so you start seeking out different things. And then, you know, we have all this, all this crazy stuff that's coming to the surface. Um, you know, there's all these, um, all the conspiracy theories or whatever you want to call them that are that are actually uh, that you know the, I know you've been reading about for years just from from listening to your podcast and I've been reading One about them for years. but then yeah. to see them to like to start come to the surface into the mass consciousness where everybody's starting to wake up wake up to this a little bit and whether or not everybody believes it it's being a little bit more openly discussed and being uh, becoming people becoming aware of these things on a far greater level than had ever been before. Um, and ultimately, you know, I think it's just um, the uh, happening this way on a mass scale, just because, you know, the shifting energies are kind of moving the darker energies, the, the more potent, the denser energies, you know, positive or negative, you need both. So it's not really positive or negative. It's just a density that, it, that has been lingering in ourselves and in our society that was able to be there because of the lower frequencies. But as we're shifting frequencies up, these things are coming to the surface like oil and water. And, um, you know, I think ultimately as we're shifting our, ourselves up collectively, these things are kind of no longer a match, which is why they're just kind of coming to the surface and things are getting crazy because they are coming to the surface and it's like, oh, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the world's going to end. But, you know, ultimately, I think it's a really, really good thing. And I know on me personally, on a personal level, all the worst stuff that ever happened to me in my life, and I've been fortunate that it hasn't been anything like really bad, but all the worst stuff that ever happened to me in my life has always also been the best stuff that's ever happened to me in my life because it's ultimately led me to the paths that have made the largest, most significant most significant differences and, and massive positive impacts. It's always a catalyst yeah. for something bigger or something better. Yeah. And that's what I think this whole thing was in 2020. Uh, definitely conspiratorial. We can all look back and say, yeah, some shit went down for real. But yeah. um, I think that on a on a scale out, because that's what I've been doing a lot lately, is just shooting way out and looking at things from really far away on a big level. And whenever we talk about like the dark and light forces here, dense and less dense energies, I completely I like uh, I resonate with you saying it that way, just simply because it doesn't show like a hierarchy 
hierarchical kind of a thing. It's just, yeah, yeah, that's just what that is. But I think also it's a great motivator, you know, because feeling like shit is a great motivator. It's like, I don't want to do this, you know? I mean, Bill Hicks had this joke about homeless people and he was, uh, and it's horrible, my heart goes out to him, but his point was uh, that, you know, a homeless guy was like, you know, hey, do you have any money? And the guy was like, yeah, I do. Uh, You know, it feels great. And he said, man, you know, give me a dollar. You don't know what it's like to be broke. And he said, yeah, I do. That's why I work, right? And so you have to know this like other side of things to be able to get out of it and then break away. With this mass consciousness shift, it seems like it's it's all at once. It's astrological. It's global. It's uh, spiritual. And that's what it feels like mainly is that it's very, very spiritual. Now, uh, conspiratorially, uh, the cabal or the other side or whatever, again, looking at it further out, it's uh, it, it looks like, I mean, of course it's on purpose. They're like, fine. I mean, they're just bored. Uh, they're bored. They're never going to do the work. So we're going to lock them down. Joe Thomas is a um, really great assessment on that was that that was their uh, way of uh, instituting shadow work. Like you purposefully have to go home and deal with your shit uh, Mm -hmm. because we're all moving. We're all ready to go on. And so this darker side that's been playing this role for a long time is tired of it too. It's kind of what it feels like. It's like, that's why it's so overt. You look at things like the Travis Scott concert, you look at what's going on. And I think politics is all politics. It's all (laughs) fake. It's wrestling to me. I'm just like, Everything in this show right now is crazy. Everything that's in the news right now is just theater. But that's the point. That's that's the, what, yeah. exactly what I'm saying. Is it's overt. Yeah. It's so ridiculous that you have to see it for what it is. And that's why the, even the the cabal, whenever they're going cabals deep on it, they're like, ah, you know, this is crazy. And they're like, please wake up. Just please get your shit together. Just understand, you know, just move <laughs> forward, please. Because they don't want to do this yeah. shit anymore either. You know, it's kind of my thought on it. But it's a great motivator. And it is a massive thing that's happening now. And what's really cool is uh, I'm excited for the next generation. Like the, the people that are waking up, like you guys right now, like our age, what we're doing right now. Those are the folks that are having babies that are going to be ushering in this new thing and really getting to, you know, reap the fruits of the labor of that, which is wonderful. And I'm grateful to be a part of the one that lays down the foundation. So yeah. um, what's, what do you think is a short term, what we can expect just globally? I mean, I'm asking you to Nostradamus this thing just a little bit, but Janine, <laughs> what do you think? Just predict it for us. We won't hold you to it if it doesn't come true, but if it well, does, we get some big high fives coming your way. I mean, I think that we're, we're in some serious motivation right now. And, you know, um, someone once said to me that if you want to go somewhere, you need both because, you know, try, try starting your car with only positive energy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a great point. It's not going to happen. You know, you need that, the, the dichotomy of the, um, the mixture of both the duality that we live in as a motivating factor to get us to get out of our comfort zones to actually make the progress. And I think, you know, um, Ultimately, I think it's it's kind of individualized where we can kind of create our own reality. And if as we are able to do that, we can kind of pattern out what we are holding in our in our in our core to kind of reflect that around us. Um, you know, and when we do that on a, on a on a collective scale, we start to do that, not even all of us together, but just some people when we get together and we actually hold intention and we work in that way, you know, you can start to shift things. And I think ultimately the, the zoom out massive scale shifts are kind of individualized. And, you know, it's not like we all live in the same exact version of reality and we're on one set timeline. I think it's vastly more complicated than that and probably vastly more complicated than the human brain can even comprehend. But I think, you know, me, like, like you said earlier, um, I'm, I'm an optimist and I think amazing things are coming. You know, I think that this is what we need to shift out of this place, you know, what, what so many people have called the prison planet to shift yeah. out of feeling trapped in um, jobs that are meaningless and in a monetary system that is enslaving us to the bills we pay and struggling to make ends meet. And, you know, such a vast difference in, um, in treatment of the, the, the wealthy and the poor and the way that is dividing even further. It's just, it's just more of that stuff coming to the surface. It's going to amplify until it pops. And what that looks like, I think is kind of what it looks like when it pops is individual and it's probably not going to be a nice, clean, pretty pop, but maybe it will be for, (laughs) (laughs) but you nailed it with the, uh, the analogy of the moving sand between patterns in the frequencies. Mm -hmm. You nailed it. That's exactly what it feels like it's in right now. Now it feels like we're leveling off. You know, it feels like definitely a beautiful pattern is emerging. Uh, Janine, do you share our chronic optimism? Um, I, I'd like to, I'm, I'm kind of 
you know, the classic artist, I'm a little misanthropic, but yeah, I think, I think the cymatic analogy really nails it and it, it resonates a lot and it makes sense. Um, and I think, I think the more things shake up, the more people are going to be shaken into the places that they need to be in order to create this pattern that ultimately comes up about. The the cymatics example, the more I think about it, you're absolutely right, Ben. It's the perfect analogy for this. And it's, it's the perfect, perfect <laughs> visual representation of this. Because then exactly in Janine, to what you were saying, I visualized one piece of that sand, one grain of that sand being mm. an individual that's on this plane. And all of us collectively are what being shaken up. Now, there's some interim. There's some, I guess, no man's land in between the patterns, right? And that's where a lot of these folks that are just super lost find themselves. But Exactly what you said. I think it's really beginning to reorganize in a beautiful new way. Uh, mm. The more I think about it, that's like the metaphor I'm going to be using forever now to describe this shift because it makes the that most sense. That is exactly why I do the work that I do and why I dis ultimately decided to step out and, and work with people because I think, you know, we each and every single one of us can have a massive positive impact on the world because of the stuff I was just talking about, how we are powerful creators and we step into that place we are able to do massive good in the world. And, you know, I think the more people realize that and start doing that, you know, it doesn't even have to be working, holding the same exact belief systems. It's just the, the vibration you're putting out into the world, the underlying aspect of that is so powerful. You know, the, the human thought patternings behind it, I think are, are kind of trivial and they don't really matter as much as is the vibrational resonance that you're holding and working with. Again, you just tacked on another beautiful metaphor to the already un- beautiful liar poor metaphor like you couldn't beautiful with it up and i just can't even talk about it uh but um janine what do you think uh the next step for all of us is just collectively uh really just kind of piggybacking on what he just said just vibing a little bit more a little higher working together letting go of shadows um mm. I, I think I think we're in that stage of the, the deep shadows. And I think collectively we all have to deal with our shit and then, then we can move through and move on. And it's like a sloughing off. I, I had a, an image, um, I don't go to a ton of sound journeys, but when he was doing a lot of in-person sound healings in studios, um, I'd go to some occasionally and I don't get like these massive visuals or, um, some people see colors and it's just like fireworks. Um, but I do have some, some experiences that really stuck with me. And one of them was, um, it was like the squeezing out, like, like everything was being pressed through like a colander or something. And it was just like a removal of what doesn't serve. You know, I use that imagery a lot. It, like when I teach yoga, just letting go of what doesn't serve. Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of this, release and sort of filtering out of all the sludge that we just accumulate in these 3d bodies and becoming i mean i don't want to say pure but that seems like the best <laughs> fitting word right now but just sort of um becoming closer to like a light body <laughs> um, mm -hmm. without being perfect. <laughs> and then beautiful metaphor on your part, because what I visualized when you were saying that is like an elevator going up to like a grate and a floor and we're all standing on this elevator, but it gets more chaotic because people are scared. Oh my God, we're coming up to this grate. And as you pass through it, yeah, you leave a lot of crap behind, but you ascend to a much more <laughs> beautiful level. And it's like this splat. It's like chaotic, but it's also necessary and beautiful. Yeah. So again, you guys are just riddled with beautiful imagery and metaphors and uh, it's just awesome the way you guys explain stuff. So... I can't go an episode without asking somebody about aliens. So what the hell do you think is going on with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, ben is an alien. so <laughs> Awesome. I, I've definitely Finally, had... first contact for me. Thank God. I was waiting on it. Okay. <laughs> I've definitely had lots of experiences my whole life just with, you know, reality being extremely pliable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, aliens, I think certainly do exist um you know maybe some exist as physical beings maybe some exist as multi-dimensional beings that are popping in out of this, this existence um but um i don't even know where to take that but yeah i mean i've i've had experiences with 
with uh, extraterrestri extraterrestrial entities or entities that aren't me that come in when I'm doing sound work and help with with that. Um, no, -uh. no, -uh. and, it's, and it, it's 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 interesting. You know, you just kind of take it and it. And it is what it is and uh, the higher part of myself is well aware of that and working with that and working with them and a lot of times it's i don't feel like i'm an octorian but a lot of times the i'm working with the octorians in the work that i do and i don't even i don't even know why and i don't even know how i on a conscious level i'm not 100 percent sure but i know what i've seen is people bifurcating and actually being um in a kind of chamber in their ship and and actually having work done on them. And it's very interesting looking. It's almost like a geometric pattern on the floor and kind of like, it's 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 so hard to describe stuff like that. And I've, I've had a lot of experiences, but I always struggle to put them to words because it's almost like looking at technology that we don't even have the, a human concept or word to put it to. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when when there was ancient civilizations and and they saw flying crafts it wasn't you know we see a spaceship we see, you know we see a flying bird and that's kind of like yeah, what it feels like God. to try yeah. to describe some of this stuff it's like how do you put it into words but yeah i mean i i firmly believe that the aliens do exist whatever you want to call them uh some some may be very much flesh and blood real third dimensional fourth dimensional beings and many 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 more i believe are um interdimensional beings, however, whatever that means to you, beings that are um, able to able to work with us, especially when we raise our frequency up to actually meet them, to, to actually be able to uh, work with us in different ways. And I don't necessarily understand it, but I've had experiences with it. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that this was when the music that you're doing now, not when you were basically like a, a backup dancer for Chuck E. Cheese, right? When you're, you're just standing there on <laughs> autopilot, it didn't occur in that vibe with you. It probably was in the stuff that you're working with now, right? Yes. With, with what I was talking about. Absolutely. That's yep. so cool. And Janine, you said you've seen them. Well, it was during a sound journey. Um, and I think we, we kind of connected it after, cause I had this really interesting experience where I was, you know, laying down, eyes closed. So it was with my third eye. Um, and I, I think there were like maybe nine to 12 people in the room. Um, and one guy was like snoring really bad. And he ended up like having a really amazing, profound experience when we talked about it at the end. But I saw these, were they two or three beings? But they were like very tall, very cloaked, hooded, but very like, um, like paper white face, but I couldn't actually see the face. Um, and they were going around the room and they were tending to this guy that was snoring a lot. Um, and they were like, I, I called them energetic doulas. They were basically um, just kind of guiding the energy in the room in a way that created a more like a vortex or something, but they were, they were really participating, but they were in like a different, different energy dimension or something, you know, and I, I kind of like, I drew the face afterwards and kind of looked it up mm -hmm. just kind of just to see like, like, and he was saying like, I think I work with the Arcturians and so I'm pretty sure that that was them. And it was, yeah, it was just kind of interesting. That is so cool. And we do talk a lot about vibration when we talk about UFOs and aliens and things like that. So, because there are a lot of hardline nuts and bolts people, and that's fine. Like nuts mm -hmm. and bolts meaning that they just come from other planets and that's all that they can be. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I've kind of reached a point with the research here and us on the show, we take a strong look at that. They're, it's probably all interconnected in some way, but it has mm -hmm. a lot to do. And this is a more mature, uh, I guess, version of this that I've come across lately after talking to Kathleen Martin. She kind of locked this idea in that is very vibrational. Because if you then think of it that way, then uh, hypnotic states can get you there, psychedelic experiences can get you there, music can get you there, and it's all got to do with the state that you exist in, right? And you access these higher dimensions, which would then lend to they're not just uh, you know, entities coming from other planets, if that's what they are at all, or if that's another version of them, that there is an interdimensional or a higher vibrational component to all of this. And that's what's mm -hmm. so cool about uh, the things that you guys as artists are able to do. You put people in this state, you you guide the energy. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of that spirit guides and entities are just you. They're different, higher expressions of you. And so really that was you, both of you, uh, walking around and clearing 
helping the guy with sleep apnea, you know, over and yeah. guiding the energy in a higher level. It's, it's cool. It's like this, you're like this beacon, Ben. When you start playing, everything comes down. They're like, all right, we're just going to go hang out with Ben and Janine for a little while. This is dope. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I get yeah, it. I think it depends on how far you zoom out, too, because, you know, when you zoom out, mm-hmm. you, you know, the oneness of everything. Um, but, you know, where we are right now in this experience, I think it's kind of the third, the third density, the third dimension, whatever you choose to call it. I think it's a very unique place where we're actually kind of cut off from the higher, from the higher dimensions. But as you are shifting up in consciousness, and I think we are right now, and that's why there's so many people that are starting to have access to channeling and access to experiences with interdimensional beings and stuff like that, because we're starting to kind of get into that new patterning some some people more than others where those uh states of multidimensionality are starting to kind of crack open in in all these different things are starting to come in being able to access the akashic records and all that stuff i think is ultimately ultimately exactly what it is is symptoms of the multidimensional shifting that's going on and you know i I think you know with aliens do they come from other planets or do they are they multidimensional i think you know it's probably both because i think we're looking at a very human beings not necessarily we in the room <laughs> the virtual room uh human beings tend to look at reality as very one-dimensional like we are here and this is what's going on and here is time and here's where i'm moving and there's one thing but i think um i mean i know that it's so much more complicated than that that there are multiple timelines that we are massively um massively strong creator beings and also multidimensional beings that are not just existing in this year and now but have multiple lifetimes in, in different dimensions and we can tap into those and experience things from those and you know tap into things like the akashic records and actually pull in information from different lifetimes and different experiences as well as whatever else is recorded there it's, it's so complicated and mind-blowing and like <laughs> it's amazing you know when you start waking up to this stuff it's like ah there's so much more in the world this you know it's, that's that's what that's why i'm optimistic you know because not just staring at this, you know, not just staring at the bad stuff that's going on in the world, but, you know, there's like a cartoon I saw once where, where, you know, there's, there's like a person that's like, sees, sees like a war going on and there's a wall and you climb up a little bit and you have like a view of, um, something that's better. And then you climb up. I, I, I don't remember. I, I totally can't picture it in my head, but I think that's exactly what's going on. You know, as we shift our consciousness, we actually, um, are able to access some really amazing things. And um, it's hard not to be optimistic once you've experienced that stuff. Dude, could not agree more. I uh, have had the analogy lately, especially to what you were saying about how this place is a bit cut off. I completely agree that it does feel that way. It feels like we're in kind of like a dog park, not to reduce us to dogs, because <laughs> yeah. dogs are great. We don't deserve them anyway, by the way. But yeah, you, uh, watch you know, you're yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, right, yeah. And again, metaphor for life. Nice job. Um, so it, it's like we have this area or this space or this environment or this simulation, whatever you want to call it. What it feels like here. And again, just the analogy I was uh doing to wrap my my own mind around this concept the other day because I'm I'm really uh, focused on lately the uh, concept of consensus reality and Ben you touched on this with us all having a very uh, specific experience here and it being very personal to us and I completely agree that's mm-hmm. the direction I've been going with it lately and then you know I've been on these panels and stuff with these folks that just have incredible ideas but none of them are the same they're the same ish uh, and mm-hmm. they have kind of the same flavors to them but all of them are incredibly unique and any one thing can be swapped out for anything else but it's very personal to them so to explain this uh, what I wrapped my mind around lately was explaining it kind of like a, that we are at a daycare or a babysitter and our parents who are our higher souls who really kind of that we're with most of the time are just going out to dinner for the night or they're at a party and they're just dropped us off in this area to be safe and cared for. There's rules here. We evolve. We learn. So we're young souls in this analogy. And all of us here are just kind of telling each other what our mom and dad's house is like and what our beliefs are, what we watch on TV or whatever, you Mm -hmm. know, our our equivalent to our pastimes and beliefs and things, but all of them are different, but all of them are also exactly 100% correct. Not only are they right, like right, right, but they're correct, right. And so this is what it means to be so personal here for you. That's why there's no real judgment at the end. We know this with NDE cases that come back and say, I wasn't judged by anyone other than me. Like I did the judging. Everything else was incredibly loving. So all of that takes place in this mental space, right? And so this is a way that I've been explaining it lately, but it does feel like that detached. And so in your example, it feels a little bit like we're on our own because 
for this example, again, it feels like our sole family or our parents, you know, who we can rely on and feel connected to have just kind of taken a break from us for the evening. You know, we're being pains in the ass in the <laughs> spiritual realm. And they're like, just go drop them off on earth for the evening and we're going to go catch a flick. Uh, it, it's what it feels like, uh, you know, and then, of course, we have different age groups in this place, which would I would equate to uh, spiritual maturity, perhaps, or just spiritual awareness. You know what they're some people just want to be told what to do. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. There's a place here in this universe for that. And uh, it serves as um, a compass for what we're not, you know, what we don't resonate with, right? And um, so, yes, I honestly, I, I love the hell out of both you guys. I could talk to you all forever, I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's uh, let's do uh, some fun ones um, here and then we'll wrap it up, okay? So Janine, uh, we're going into a new world. We're going into a new earth. You can take anything you want. You can leave anything you want. Uh, what is one thing that you would change uh, about the new planet, the new dimension that we're going to? One thing I would change. Yeah, about anything in your reality. Is there something that you've seen that's just kind of like, hmm, uh, we could do without that. Uh, here's your opportunity to do that. It's kind of like in that movie Hitchhiker's Guide when they make the new planet. And he's like, did you want anything changed? You know, uh, this is your opportunity <laughs> for that. Um, uh, honestly, sometimes the human body is really gross. Oh, okay. And- <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's some people that make a lot of money out of the gross, the things we find gross. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I think, yeah, I, th- I would just make it a little bit more simple. <laughs> okay. I like it. A little easier to drive. <laughs> That's a great, a great analogy. Okay. Uh, ben, what about you? Um, I wasn't even thinking about it from my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so from your perspective, you could change anything you want. Uh, you could um, turn like park benches into s- sound bowls and that's just it. Well, that's all I, I think what I would, I would change is the, um, the way that we are, f- are the, the whole prison planet aspect, you know, the monetary system, the way that we have to struggle so hard to survive and feel so disconnected. I feel like, you know, having a little bit more connection to the higher parts of ourselves and creating a little bit more flow so that we don't feel like we're on a prison planet and feel like we have a little bit more control, which I think is where we're going. So I think we're manifesting that anyways. Interesting. And I agree with you. And I like this. I like the, uh, I, I'm not, a, I've never resonated really with the pl- prison planet idea. Now I do consider myself more of like Charlie Robinson calls a conspiracy analyst, not a conspiracy theorist. I like checking them out. I don't absorb the negative energy from it, but it's fun, you know? Uh, and so, uh, mine is, uh, that the customer's always right. I think that needs to go out the window. That's over. <laughs> you get that shit gone. Uh, cause being in the customer yeah. service industry for years, I can tell you that yeah, really it's just yeah. an excuse to treat people like shit. <laughs> And it's horrible, right? Okay. Uh, well, all of this uh, can actually be achieved in this lifetime, which is great. Uh, Janine, we're going to have to work on yours, probably a series of diapers or something. But uh, yeah. it is entirely, entirely possible. You know, in mind to, to... Start to move into a light-based diet. Yeah. yeah light, absolutely. Go out there and we're sun your genitals. I, I haven't sunned my balls yet, but my wife keeps telling me to do it. I just haven't brought myself to do it yet. Uh, <laughs> I don't need... You know, we live in the country. I don't need my good old, good old boy neighbor walking by being like, mm-mm, that boy ain't right. But uh, <laughs> it, it's uh, apparently incredibly beneficial and it's it's 15 minutes of my time and i think uh i may try it so maybe we'll just make a pack to all go out and sun our genitals today if you're listening to this spend 15 minutes with your junk in the sun and it'll do you some good so um you guys are absolutely incredible um i think that we're probably going to wrap it up on this one i could talk to you forever but for now uh let's wrap it up because i'm ready to go uh order a painting from you janine and then ben to put your music back on i'm sick of not hearing it right now so again <laughs> guys uh, all the ways to find janine burgess and ben carroll will be located down in the show notes so y'all go over and show them some love allow the beauty that they bring to this world to bring some beauty to your world thanks again guys for listening thank y'all so much for joining me Thanks, Brandon. Thank you so much. I want to give a huge shout out to Janine and Ben for joining me on the show. Absolutely incredible people. Uh, just two of my favorite artists in general. Just his music, her artwork and paintings. It's just a beautiful combination, guys. So I hope you all could feel the energy on that as well. Make sure that you go down in the show notes and check out all of the ways to experience their art for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Uh, the music that you're hearing right now is by a good buddy of mine, Vinny the Saint. Check the show notes for his link as well. He's got a bunch of new music coming out. He's on documentaries everywhere. Vinny is killing it. Y'all go show him some love. Uh, If you're in the love show and mood, check the show notes for our... 
website as well. So expandingrealitypodcast.com. And that's how you can expand your experience with us here on the show. And if uh, you want to do so, it's linked all down there. You got a lot of links down there to pick from, but uh, go down there and check all that stuff out. It's all good stuff. So go out into this beautiful, beautiful place, whatever the fuck this is, guys. And y'all just pick up a piece of litter, get out of the left-hand lane, of course, buy somebody in line around you, near you, whatever, a coffee, a meal, a water, book a stamp, something super simple. It makes a massive difference on the collective and the vibrations ripple out. And that's an amazing way to live your life. Also, while you're uh, doing that, just go ahead and be nice to every entity, human, animal, anybody that you come across. Uh, open doors for people. You know, chivalry is not dead. Make sure that you grow where you're planted. That's very important. Do with what you can where you are at. Tend your garden, guys. Uh, and above all of that stuff and beyond anything else, y'all go out into this beautiful, beautiful place, whatever the fuck it is. And y'all just be a good to one another. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.